This program is a 21-week competition where we've invited five teams to compete in stage one in our controller hardware in the loop testbed. We'll then run an evaluation and invite the top two performing teams back for stage two to work in our power hardware in the loop testbed as well as in our cyber physical testbed. So at the end of the 21 weeks, we will purchase the winning controller that best meets the needs of our research facility. As uh, we are evaluating multiple vendors, it was uh, critical uh, to develop a test sequence which is equal for uh, everyone. We started with microgrid connected to the grid. Then the next phase is uh, called plant islanding. Uh, after this period, we reconnect back to grid. Then we have unintentional islanding. We reconnect to the grid and this way we conclude our test sequence. It consists of uh, events which uh, can be forecasted, for example, price of energy or uh, installation patterns. But there are some aspects which cannot be forecasted. Uh, for example, one of your generators that you're relying upon may become unavailable. This could be because of a fault in the system or the engine itself just broke down. At various times, the utility is going to ask you to do things. Uh, the sun's going to come up and go down, which is going to affect your solar uh, output. And then other things, uh, such as a fault internally inside the microgrid, will cause you to now close in some tie feeders and try to reserve, try to reestablish some power to as many critical loads as you can. And there's no one right answer to this, which is also very interesting. Each microgrid controller may choose a different way of achieving the same objectives, and we'll see who scores the best. The SEL microgrid solution was a combination of two pieces of equipment. We used the RTAC with our PowerMax microgrid libraries. Those were the libraries that contain all of the features that you might want to implement for a microgrid. These features have already been tested and put into the libraries that can be deployed on other microgrids. And then we also added the software-defined networking switch. The overall goal was to have the most profitable cost of ownership for the microgrid. Uh, the key performance parameters are resiliency, fuel usage, interconnection contract, grid services, power quality, grid survivability, and operation and maintenance costs. So taking all those things into account, we were able to incorporate those into our economic dispatch engine which is a component of our microgrid controller that allows us to feed in different levels of impacts for cost. And then the engine itself runs an algorithm to search for the optimal dispatch that equals the lowest cost of operation or the most profit for operating your microgrid. After we sum all of them together, we get an overall score, which we call economical operation. And then for the scoring metrics, we actually transition all those to dollars. So actual financial benefits, you know, how much money you're spending versus how much you're saving or making. And then in the end, the winner is the one who makes the most money. After the 21 weeks, we finished up the power hardware in the loop testing. And there was this waiting period where we weren't sure what the test results were going to be. So from the start, I knew that we had a good chance of winning. I had seen the track record of success. But the, the challenge was they were trying to push the envelope on testing mechanisms. This was part of an evaluation of technology. So they didn't want to just look at features on paper. They wanted to stretch the proof of functionality. So all the participants went through our key performance parameter or metrics. And then out of all the participants, uh, Schweitzer got the highest uh, dollar return and thus the highest score in the challenge. When the SEL controller uh, took over the microgrid and transitioned away from the utility, they proactively closed a lot of the tiebreakers and the distribution lines between all the different areas. And I think that allowed them to better serve some of those critical loads, regardless of which uh, local generation assets were still available. We put together a team that really comprised the right expertise, and that's something that makes SEL's team successful on microgrid projects. It's really exciting to be on the forefront 
of the energy systems transition and working with really smart people to develop our future energy systems.